You're listening to the What is a Woman podcast, hosted by the Catholic Family Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the What is a Woman podcast. My name is Holly, and as always, I'm joined here by my mother, Mandy. And um, we'll just begin our episode by saying, Jesus, Jesus meek and humble, humble of heart, make our hearts like, like unto thine. So we're super excited to be back on the Catholic Family Podcast for another episode. And uh, before we begin, I just wanted to uh, give a little shout out to Kevin since he gave us a little shout out this morning. Yes, <laughs> he did. That's exactly so, was my number one oh, thing. It? Yeah, I just wanted to say okay. thank you. Kevin said thank you to us for being so... Um, I believe the word he used was reliable and yeah, um, that comes from regular. my grandmother. That comes from my grandmother. So um, she you know, she was you know she was if you said you're doing something, something you're doing it. No matter if yeah. something better came up, no matter if better you know people were involved or like no, I said I was doing, doing this. That. Yeah, like she would you know and I and, and I'm like that. Yeah. So, so I get it from her. We just uh, we we appreciated that little shout out and we love doing these little episodes and. Uh, it is our pleasure. <laughs> yes, it is. Well, that's what I did mark down here. Why exactly do we do this? Oh, okay. You know, because, you know, like, like Kevin doesn't get any money. No. From like he and he said that in he, his. He says it. He yeah. said this is all like a hobby. This is a side thing well, for did, him. Yeah, he did. He called you it know, a hobby. He though. called it a hobby. And um, uh, we do this too for no money. Yeah, and actually, I didn't. I was listening to their little live show this morning, and I didn't realize that his father does, has a job too. Like I didn't know did, that I either. Didn't know yeah, that Dan works too. Yeah, so I I don't actually have a job except if you can, if you count cooking for a million people, and babysitting breakfast, lunch, grandchildren. <laughs> <laughs> There's about seven, six of them here today. So yeah. <laughs> we're in the bunkie, and they're out there running around. But um, but like, why why do we do this? You say, why do you do this? You know, why do you give up all your f- free time i can and i certainly myself i do not want to be famous like this is not like oh let's you know oh you know i'll make a name for myself Myself. or something in fact you know i i want to reach as many people as possible but i want to reach the right people you know and help be helpful right like i don't want to you know i don't want this to actually blow up you know and be like so big that the, you know, somebody's calling you to be on the, their show so, or something yeah, like no, that. There's no, there's no part of that. Like I, I wanted to be intimate and, you know, with my fellow Catholics. Yes. Yeah. You know, and, and, and anybody else you and, and reaching, reach. reaching the world where they need to be reached too. Yeah. But you know, that doesn't involve any kind of glory, glory for me. Yes. At all. Like, you know, as the least amount as possible is my my viewpoint on this but the base the basic reason why we do this like we've been we've been in the you know in the set of a contest church for um i mean i i'm just i'm not calling it the set of a contest church. Yeah, I was gonna say, i'm calling it the catholic church sure, sure. <laughs> you know i we've been true catholics for over 30 years right mm-hmm. it was a very small amount of people and now we have this huge influx of people and when I came, when I came to the church, I didn't know anything, mm-hmm. right? I had one family to follow and I did, fo- I just followed her and I was like, she was my, it, it was, I'm going to say who it was. Just, yeah. can I say who it was? It was, it was the Picard family. the Picard family. So like, oh, this is what they do. Oh, that's what Catholics do. I mean, oh, this is what they do. So I will, I will preface <laughs> by saying you didn't like. It wasn't like you picked them out of the church to follow. There was no they one else. They were the church. There was no one else <laughs> to follow. There was no one else to follow. Like, when when my mom, well, it was my grandfather that actually found yeah. that Lady Victory for us. There was, it was, like, very small. Very like there, small. It wasn't like he went into a church of 200 people. Yeah, and, and, I, and you see, and I didn't know anything about being a Catholic. Yeah. I knew not. I mean, I was a cradle Catholic, yeah. but novice order. That meant nothing. That meant nothing. Like, I mean, but anybody who knows your... that knows how nothing that means. Yeah. Right. I had no idea how to be. A, I knew nothing about about anything that had right. to do with Catholicism. Like, I mean, I was a little bit angry. I was like, oh, my gosh. But I had to follow somebody. Right. Right, I, somebody had to teach me, and I was reading everything I could read. But I was also following the example of someone who was before me. Right? right, you know, I mean, she taught me a lot. Like she taught me to go to mass. If you can go to mass, you go to mass. Yeah, it like there's have no, to be Sunday. there's no excuse not to go to mass yeah. ever. Yeah. You know, if you can go, like unless yeah. you know, obviously, there's many reasons 
pop up I know, while but, you, you can't. Know, you when you're I'm just gonna say from an outsider secular perspective, church is for Sunday. Yes. Like that's how the world views church. Right. Well she taught me that it's for whenever you can do it. Do it. Yes. You have to go give praise and glory to God. Yes. Right? And you have to do that. And you know, she taught me little things like I remember one particular moment where they were out planting the flowers. She had her her children out planting the flowers around the church. I mean, it was raining. And she said, oh, well, just pray to God. <laughs> <laughs> then the rain stopped ah, and we got to plant and, the flowers. And, and she taught me to look after the church, that it was our responsibility to, to you know, she taught me a lot Yeah. back in the day when I knew nothing. Yeah. And um, so, so now we have this huge influx of people. Like huge. Yeah. And they're coming from all sorts of backgrounds. Yeah. You know, and they don't know. Yeah. They they don't know. And I, and, and for me personally, it's like, we got to teach the people. We have to teach the people. Yeah. Right. We have to um, let them know how to be Catholic again. They want to be Catholic, you know. And I mean, if you know, you know. But so if you don't know. You know. Who's so, gonna... right. So what, how better than to teach the people? So, you know, if you're, and people have come up to us, multiple people. And said, oh, you know, I learned so much. I learned this and I learned that yeah. and I'm doing this. And I'm, and we had um, in the church, it was, we have a very new convert. This is, and the, I'm going to tell you, this is, this is the Catholic Family Podcast is reaching people. Yes. It's reaching people. She, she's a very new convert from, from nothing, right? And she has a very unique story, maybe somebody can tell it but i don't think it's our story to tell yeah. so we won't tell it but she came up to us in in the basement of the church and she was she goes Are, you're holly right yeah she came up you're yeah. holly and she says yeah she goes i just typed in tlm cuz she's looking for information and of course the, the catholic Catholics. family podcast came up yeah. and she's looking at it and she sees these kids she's like I'm pretty sure those people go, go to, to my, my church. church. <laughs> yeah. and, so, and then, of course, so she's all right in. She's looking at the Catholic fam Family Podcast. Yeah. So it is reaching people. It is, you know, yeah. it is out there helping people how to um, how to live and okay. be Catholic. Yeah. Right? And it's so needed. That I mean, that's why we do it. Right. Yes. So, I mean, that that's really good. And I just, when Kevin was, I just happened to wake up this morning and got a notification they were doing a live show. So I tuned in and, and, uh, it was nice to hear, uh, Kevin say thank you for our yeah, little so, podcast. So, so thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> I, I say thank you, Kevin, too, because yeah. I mean, we weren't able to put, put no, together a platform that like this, people no. would follow and yeah. do all that work of getting interesting people. I was thinking people actually and, they were talking in their uh they were talking in their live show and I was thinking how great would it be to have a um a Catholic family conference. Yeah. You know, like and have it somewhere like in a central location where people could go and meet and you know. Yeah, yeah. Like like you know how they have conferences, right? right like right. they have the Fatima conference. That's a big one. But I mean like something like, you know, where all the followers of Catholic Family Podcast could go and meet for the weekend or something. Yeah, that would be very cool. No, I might... I, that's out of my wheelhouse for organizing, <laughs> but <laughs> and, and I actually when when COVID started I had resigned myself that I was never crossing the border again. I know, but I, you know, you my know. mom and I, it's funny because my mom and I were talking the other day and I, remember I told you I said what my dream vacation would be? To go to Spokane. No? Yes. Okay. To get, because <laughs> I was thinking back to when I was a kid and my grandparents, um, every, in the summertime, my grandpa would just load up this, they had this little Chrysler car and he would like load it up. He'd go to the wholesalers and we'd get a big bucket of sour keys and we'd pack our bags and he would take me and my sisters, the three of us, three girls, and we'd go to Omaha and then we'd go and we'd stop at different places along the way, like Branson, Missouri. One year we stopped there. One year, I can't remember all the places we stopped. Usually, it was for some war museum or something. Yeah, for my grandpa. Love the war. <laughs> but anyways, and the the central part of the trip was going though to Omaha, right? Um, and then going to the sisters. He would drop us off at the convent for a couple yeah. of days, and we'd stay with the sisters. And um, but that is my idea of a good vacation, right? You know, so I was like, you know, now that I'm an adult, I would like to recreate that. With my children, you know, yeah. load up the car, they get to pick some snacks, and we drive. I would like to go to Spokane because I'd really like to see Father and I again, but, um, 
And I believe that's where he is. But anyways, um, and I've never been to Spokane. I haven't either. I've never been to the so, mount. And I've never, yeah. you know, I'd love to go there. And I'd love to take my children there. And you, because, you know, it's just, it's, it's funny because people are like, oh, my dream vacation. I want to go to Dominican or I want to go, you know, I'm talking secular people. Yeah. You know, I want to go lay on a beach somewhere. And all I want to do is get in the car and drive to Spokane, Washington. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know? So well, I feel those like... Those other places usually involve a lot of sin. Well, no, I know. But, you know, that doesn't strike my fancy. Right. But exactly. I'm just saying, like, you know, those... I don't want those days to be over, though. No, I don't want like, them to I be Like, I know that the either. C word kind of killed a lot of that. Yeah. Especially for us Canadians. But uh, I know of a family that our parish that crossed the border recently. And a lot of no people problems, are crossing so, the border recently. You know, who knows? And I'm just like... And, and well, for me, it's because I so put it out of my mind and I'm like... Oh, we can, and they're they're ordaining a priest. Yes, at uh, and his first mass is going to be at Father Radecki's parish, parish in Wayne, Michigan. And Father was here last night for dinner, and you know he said, "Have you ever been there?" I said, "Oh, ton, like tons used to of go times, all the time." I've been there. The I've been there well, to weddings. To, I've been there to first tell communions. Our followers, that's a what forty-five hour hour drive. Father Radecki's parish. Forty How far is it? From? It's it's four to five. It's no. Not forty. What did you say? I'm trying to an hour from Father to Father Radecki's. No, it's it's about two hours from here to Windsor, the border, and then about oh, and an then hour. Oh, it's a little bit further. I'm just thinking to the border. Yeah, not to the border. To his church. I'm to talking the to the yeah. border. Yeah, we are close to a border. It's not like yeah. we have to travel. It, here's across a, well, Canada. here's a bit of tidbit information for you. Ninety-eight percent of all Canadians live within two, two hours months. of an American mm-hmm. border. So yeah, let so that like sink in. You you think <laughs> you think of Canada and everybody thinks of Canada this big wide country with all the wilderness and the the mm-hmm. snow and the you know that's mm-hmm. that's the rap we get. We're all most Canadians are confined down yeah. into this little neck of Canada at the bottom. Right. Like there's this whole Nunavut and <laughs> <laughs> not a lot of people live up there. Well, you, there's not even roads up there. No. <laughs> like you have to fly in. Yeah. Right, but um even if you drive up um, Thunder Bay is at the top of Lake Superior. Yeah. And it's probably, I'm not entirely sure, but it's pretty north in Ontario, right? Right. But even when you drive, this is how weird the map is. Even if it's a seven, longer than 17 hours, it's like 18, maybe it's 20 hours from here for us to go to Thunder Bay. From here yeah. to Thunder Bay is 20 hour drive. Right. I know Whereas it's, we can be it's in actually, in an hour. No, it's actually <laughs> closer for us to go to Florida. Than to go to Thunder Bay. Than to go to Thunder Bay, right? Yeah. Which is at the top of, well, it's not the top of Ontario, but it's one of the the most northern actual cities cities. in Ontario. So, but anyway, when you get to Thunder Bay, you're only a few hours to an American border. Yeah, when you get to Thunder Bay. When you get there, because it's it's on Lake Superior, right? It's the top of Lake Superior, so... So even even those folks in Thunder Bay are not that far. They're not that far from an American border. I know. So let that kind of yeah. sink into the, the geography of the way Canada the actually way is. Works. Yeah. Right. But so. anyways, we're, that's enough of our geography lesson today. Right. <laughs> we got way off there, but it's just it. I get very excited when I hear about Catholic things and things going on, and then I want to be a part of everything. So. Right. Yeah. I want to be a part of everything, which brings me to another. Th- thing I had oh, okay. I, another note I had made on here that I wanted to talk about because the Davis family put up a video of um them singing at home okay the nuns and a couple yeah, of priests I and saw it. stuff and right? your tablecloth match. and my tablecloth <laughs> we had the same tablecloth I didn't know it as well it goes I said, Lisa has your table. Well, I don't know whose house it was. They have your tablecloth. I said, Mom, they have the exact same tablecloth as you. (laughs) Weird things. Anyway. (laughs) So anyway, so we're united. We have the same tablecloth. (laughs) But, but besides that. You weren't going to the tablecloth with this? I know. No. Oh, okay. (laughs) (laughs) But um, when you watch the Davises and their whole family dynamics, which we get a little taste of every once in a while, oh, yeah. right? You can get a little like, oh, that's, oh, it looks so good. That's not my family. Yeah. You know, I'm all alone or yeah, I'm, or look at all the, the nuns you know, that's so great. Look what they have. And I have nothing. You can get a little like that. Yeah. I mean, and even I get a little like that and I have like, and you have lots of, family. I have tons of family. I just don't have any religious. I'm like, yeah, where are my religious? <laughs> Maybe the next generation will yeah. come, right? 
But what I wanted to point out about that is you need, even if you're all alone, like even if you're by yourself, you need to start creating the world you want to live in, right? Like, and when you look at that and you say, that's the world I want to live in. Right. I need to create it, even if I'm all by myself. And I'm going to tell you because even though I have a lot of, like a lot of family. Yeah. You know, all my grandchildren are Catholic. All my children are Catholic. Everybody's Catholic. We, you know, we, we live in each other's pockets. Like, yeah. um, even though I have that in my life, I didn't always have it. Right. You know, there was a time period, especially when the kids started to grow up and they started to leave and you had left the church and your brother was out West and, you know, your sisters were, I don't know, you know, but like there yeah. was no, there was no, fa- I was all by myself and everybody seemed to be, even though they hadn't like completely left the church, they seemed to be, you know, not all that invested, right? right. Not all that interested. There was just so much going on in the world. And I, what I had done was I just started I just started to create the world I wanted to live in. Right. And how I did that was um, I just did everything the way you were supposed to do it. So I would go to church any chance I got. I would go to Mass any chance I got. And, and the other thing, too, we didn't have a full-time resident priest at this time. Right. So priests were flying in or driving in or doing something the same same mass. mass And And, and we were really, we were dwindling down to next to nothing in the parish. Right, because a lot of the kids had... Yes. Not left, but they've moved. They've moved, moved, they they grew up. The two families of children grew grew up. up, And nobody was having children yet. Right, and it was a very lonely place. Like it wasn't... uh, I remember one of my friends from... The Church of Old People. That's right. One of my friends said that to me. They said, oh, we thought nothing but old people up there. Yeah. And I'm like, well, well, <laughs> not exactly. <laughs> but pretty much we were. were. Yeah. Right. So anyway, so I would go there and I said, well, if CMRI is willing to bring a priest here, even if it's only for, for me, me, then it's only for me. Right. And I would go in there and I would say, well, and I had, I had, a, I put myself into a, a little bit of a, a mentality that I was the ark. Yeah. You know, and this, you know, with the church, right? And if I was the only one in the ark, then I was the only one in the ark. But this boat was sailing, right. right? And so I had that mentality and I just waited and prayed until everybody got in the ark. Right. You know, and that's that's kind of how it worked. And But you have to kind of create that and not lose hope. Right. Right. Not lose hope. Like one day that can be your life. Right. But it starts, it really does start with you. Well, yeah, you, you have to be, you have to be, have the right, I don't know if the word is disposition. Um, well, you have to not care so much, I think. Right. You have to say it. Okay. If I say this is God's will for me right now. If I'm the only one doing it, I'm, I'm the only right. one doing it. And if God wants to send other people and other people come, then they I, will come. I said, you know, if, if it's worth, if it's worth the bishop to send a, a, priest all the way up here to canada just for me to have have mass and you now, know let's the, be clear it wasn't just my it mother. wasn't just me. <laughs> <laughs> but it was pretty darn there are a few others <laughs> it was getting pretty it like dwindly it was getting dwindly you yeah. know and i said well then so be it mm-hmm. you know and uh, now but now look at that now look at the fruits of those labors yeah you know it's, now we're it's standing room only half the time yes you know, I there, had to, there's people, you know, there's people sitting in the choir loft. Yes. There's loft. We don't have a loft. Yeah. But there's sit there at Holy Week. There were people sitting in the choir that weren't in the choir because yes. there's no room. Yes. Like the right. church is full. Right. 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 So. so, so guys, you know, it starts with you create the world you wish to live in. Right. Yeah. And if, and for a while, if it's just you, well, it's, yeah, just, it's you. just you just know that just say, I'm here, Lord, I'm here. here. Yeah. You know, no point. Uh, you're here if you come for me you come for me yeah. and that's that's it yeah. you know but anyway so that's what what else did i put on here that i want creating the world yeah and we talked about yeah okay She's looking, we made notes this time. we made notes we made notes so oh well, my mom did and before we just get into our book and um back to the mission of these young women i did just want to mention and i wish i would have actually mentioned this in lent because it's a little more um prevalent but i mean the passion of our lord 
is prevalent all the time. All the time. And when I'm going to say this, you're, it's going to make sense. But um, I just finished reading Meditations on the Passion, and I will try to find the book itself to link it, because I know whenever we mention books, somebody always comes on and says, where do I find that book? I couldn't actually find it anywhere to buy it. Um, I found it one place and it was out of stock. So maybe I'll just share that link. And um, because like we mentioned on other podcasts, I'm very leery about books and where to get them. Yeah. Um, uh, the copy that I had, I just borrowed it from father and I returned it. Uh, but I did want to mention um, a little passage that I had re- uh, re- written. Read. I read in there. I didn't write it. <laughs> um And basically, I thought this was very important and very prevalent. um, But the book, throughout the whole book, they don't um, refer to the devil as the devil. They constantly call him the enemy. The enemy. They never say the devil, but you know they're talking about the devil. So um, towards the end of the book, there's a very important part. And this really opened my eyes about the carrying of the cross. And not so much Mm -hmm. Jesus carrying his cross. That's important too, but what we can take from Jesus carrying his cross and how we carry our own crosses. And I know um, that the carrying of the cross can be very burdensome, very heavy, (coughs) but we also know that there is no way to heaven without the cross. Without the cross. No glory without the cross. you, You have to carry that cross. You have to. That and, is the only way to heaven. And everybody and, has it. And everybody has one. There's nobody without even, a cross. Even people who live what would seem like nice, idyllic nice, life. Nice, simple lives. There's mm. still crosses. Everyone has one. Yeah. So um, in the book, they're they're talking about the, the part where, you know, the Pharisees and the Jews are taunting Jesus while he's on the cross. Right. And, and they're telling him to come down from the cross. Yeah. They're saying, come down from your cross. And we all know that. Yeah. Um, But when they're talking about this quote-unquote enemy and what he hates the most, the book references that the enemy, i.e. the devil, hates the carrying of the cross. Right. He can take the fleeting moments of piety from Catholics. He'll just, you know, be like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, you're holy now. Enjoy your holy now. Yeah. But what he really cannot stand is the picking up and the carrying of the cross. And for me personally, when I hear that, I feel like I don't presume to know, but I can just imagine the reason why he hates that is because, you know, you're doing it. Yeah, and also... And you're not just talking about when you physically, not physically, but, you know, you pick up that cross and you take that burdensome, that suffering, and you put it on your back. Yeah. I, I can imagine that that would drive him because crazy. Because, I'm going to tell you, because it's 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 the road to sanctity. A, it's the road to sanctity. And what you're doing when you pick up that cross is you're saying willingly, not my will, but But thine thine will be done. Yes. So no matter what burdens me, I'm doing it because God wants it done. done. Yes. Right? So I'm just going to read this this quote from the book. Um, So it's speaking of, in this part of the book, they're speaking of the enemy and what he hates the most. And they're talking about... Um, well, I'll just read it here. So, quote, answer his challenge, come down from the cross with no surrender. I will be true to thee, Lord Jesus, to death, end quote. So, so the devil will tempt you to put your cross aside. Yeah. And he will say in, in not so many words, come down from the cross. Come down. You've you know, done enough. You've done enough. You've suffered there enough. Is no there's hope. no, there's, you know, so you answer that. You answer yeah. his challenge. With no surrender. Yes. I will be true to thee, Lord Jesus, to death. And to me, when I read that, I was like, there are there is such power in those words. Right. That if you're struggling and you run a flake off your cross, and if you were like, no, nope, and you say that. Yeah. That is, a, that is a plea that I believe our Lord would not. Right. Deny you. You know, right. like, well, he, yeah, there's no way our Lord uh-huh. is going to. And, I, and I'm going to say about, too, because this has... This has a connection too with you know if you're if you if you're not surrounded with the the glory things of of Earth? God oh of God you know like you know you don't have that light I mean because I do feel for the people that are by themselves yes and they say well you know it's me and it's me and my son somebody said you know it's just me I'm over here by myself mm-hmm. you know and I know I like I said like I had a moment where you guys were young adults, where everything seemed to be falling apart. Yeah. So where it was just me. 
Yeah. And so um, what I did a lot of times was anytime I, I got angry, like when people were doing stuff completely out of my control, mm -hmm. and I was just like, <sighs> and I'd be like, I took that personally as I was in a war with the devil. Yeah. And I was like, and I would go, I go, oh, you, you want to do that? And so I'd go outside and I'd shake some holy water around and I'd say <laughs> prayers. And I'd say, how do you like me now? You know, to the devil. Oh, you think you're yeah. going to win? How do you like me now? You know, and I used to do stuff like that all the time. And it was, you know, I know it's, you know, the better way is to love God. But like, if you're going to harass me through my family members and you're going to yeah. harass me through those yeah. above, well, I'll just show you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to do everything you don't like. You, I don't like this. Well, you don't like that. You know, yeah. that's that's the way I look at it. Like, come out from under that rock, rock. you sneaky, slimy devil. <laughs> and I'd be like, and I'd be like, so I can put some holy water. Okay. On. Also, uh, mom, uh, maybe we should tell the followers we don't really have neighbors. We're out in the middle of nowhere, so <laughs> <laughs> my mom wasn't outside in the yard, and the neighbors looking at you. <laughs> well, well, I did a lot of things that people would have thought odd. <laughs> If they saw me, but you I know, just, I, we weren't around, so I'm just I'm envisioning this in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, I used to do, I used to do it all the time. I used to say, "Okay, no, all I, right, well, I, how, I, about, how about another rosary? How do you like that?" I, <laughs> I, know? it's funny because not funny, but I, I keep hold. I mean, we all have. I hope we all have holy water at home. I keep yeah. holy water at home. And when the kids, you know, sometimes the kids have nightmares and uh -huh. stuff, and and I just say, you know what no match for holy water and I go and I sprinkle the holy water around the room like things yeah. like that you know and they're they're instantly right assured yes and felt and because they believe right they 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 believe and I've taught them to have that hope and that faith, faith. in God yeah. that if you ask for his help yeah he's not going to leave you he's not going to abandon you you right, know right so holy water right so we're, in your home so yeah <laughs> so well and also too I, I should bring up that shirt you guys made me Oh, so <laughs> <laughs> my mom was a big Y two Ker. Yeah, I was. So she world was. was coming to the an world end. World was coming to an end, and she stocked the pantry. Lots of beans. Lots of beans. Canned yeah. beans. She she brought out every no for out. That's a grocery store. All the beans, and she stocked. We had this pantry in the basement. It was stocked full of beans, and you know, and at the time, I don't know. I briefly re remember Dad. Being like you're crazy or something. Yeah, he did. He, he thought was, I was he crazy. He was like, why 2 k And I said, well, I, uh, my, to my defense, I was like, I don't oh, know. No. And I want to be prepared. I want to be prepared, right? right? <laughs> so anyways, this is long after Y2K because, you know, as we all know, Y2K came. And the computers went, didn't nothing. crash. Nothing happened. And my mom sat there in the dark on New Year's Eve. No. Disappointed. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, know. I don't even remember what I did. No. Well, that didn't happen. Well, actually, I knew it didn't happen because Australia is ahead of us. Right, right. So it didn't happen for them. I'm still chatting to them. Yeah. You know? So, but anyway, so years, years, years later, we made my mom a shirt. And on the front of the shirt, it says, I learned a long time ago, dot, dot, dot. And then on the back of the shirt, it says, you can't fight Satan with a can of beans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, that, that's what because I... Because that's what, at learning from this Y2K experience, you know, she, she tells people. And she says that. That's why we made her the shirt. She tells people, I learned a long time ago, you can't fight Satan with a can of beans. <laughs> like, that's what she tells people. I, I know, because, you know, like, and, and we are at a war with the enemy. The mean. Yes. Right? So you want to fight him, you got to do what hurts him. Yeah. Right? And a can of beans don't hurt anybody. No. You no. know, and if you're were, you know, and I mean, I have a different perspective. That that doesn't mean like I'm out here. We're out here, and if you follow our channel, <laughs> the Catholic Homestead, yeah. right? That we're trying to be, we're trying to live um, more self reliant, right. and we're trying, you know, I mean, a I, for many reasons, not because I'm I'm worried that we're going to starve to death or things are going to happen. I don't, I don't, I have confidence in God. That if, we, uh, you know, that if we have to eat dandelions, then I guess we have yeah. to eat dandelions. But I better know how to prepare Your dandy. Dandelions so they taste good. You know, <laughs> like, so so the thing is, is it's all about just just a different way of living 
as opposed to the world. Well, it's yeah, not it's, about it's, it's, saving myself the for the world. world. It's about removing yourself from the world and being more reliant on just natural yeah. things that you can do on your own. Right. Without having to go to Walmart. Or, yes, you know yeah, exactly. It's, so, it's it's doing a lifestyle change. But the shirt, the funny thing about the shirt, the shirt was a joke. But my mom actually wore it, and she would wear like a sweater over top of it. And we at the time we had a store, and the one time remember you were wearing it, and some lady asked you, "What did you learn a long time ago?" <laughs> and mom's like, "Nothing, nothing," because <laughs> she couldn't see the back, right? right yeah. Anyways, oh, you wouldn't get it. You <laughs> wouldn't get it. <laughs> Inside joke. <laughs> so, anyway. But anyway. So to create the world you want to live in and, you know, you're by yourself, you do have to fight the enemy. Yes. You have to pick up the cross. You have to fight the enemy. You have to, you know, when you get angry or frustrated or people aren't, aren't, um, you know, they're like losing their faith or they're not coming to their, you know, then you go after the enemy. Yeah. Leave them alone and say, okay, I know who's doing this. I know yeah. who's behind all this. Yeah. And how do you like me now? And I'm and 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 like I said, you know that book spelled it out plain as day. The way to conquer the enemy, yeah, is to just pick up the cross. Yeah, endure the suffering, endure the hardship, and leave everything else in God's hands. Exactly. So uh, let's uh, touch on our book here. Um, do what? What do you want to dive right in? Well, okay. Do you want to tell people what book we're reading? Did we? Do we mention it? Did we mention it at the beginning? Because I feel like we just expect everybody, everybody to, know. to know that. So yeah. maybe yeah. So we are reading from Mission and Duties of Young Women, um, and we are on chapter. Uh, is it eight or nine? I don't know. Solicitude. So we're still. I decided the last week we said we were going to jump ahead or something. But and now I, my mom's changed her mind. I've changed my mind. I went back. I was like, well, we didn't actually even read this chapter, no, and that's so, not very fair, no. right? So let's dive it's right the in. The solicitude of the world, and I gotta tell you, who knows what the word solicitude means? My mom looked it up. Did you know what the word solicitude meant? No, but you told me. Did I? Yes. And what did I? What did I say? I've forgotten. <laughs> Because I thought, it was you know, a busy week. <laughs> when you say solicitude, I just, you know, I thought, well, it sounds like I thought like it mean like solitude, solitude like yeah, by solitude. yourself. Yeah, no, that's what I thought, but that's not what it means. It doesn't. It means care and concern for something. Oh, so your care and concern for the world, like what, how, what it should be. Oh, okay, right. So, um, so maybe we better read this chapter because yeah, we better. So anyway, um, here, we're, I better start where. Where you left off. Yeah, right there where that arrow is. So okay. go ahead and read us something. So we're reading from the Mission and Duties and young wo of Young Women, the chapter of Worldly Solicitude. Yeah. So, uh, right there, the arrow. Yeah. Okay. Quote, Oh, how truly may we stay to young women in the language of our Savior. Why are you solicitous? Behold the birds of the air, for they neither sow, nor do they reap, nor gather into barns. And your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not, are not you of much more value than they? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They labor not, neither do they spin. But I say to you that not even Solomon, in all his glory, was arrayed as one of these. And if the grass of the field, which is today and tomorrow, is cast into the oven, God doth so clothe. How much more, O, how much more you, O ye of little faith, ye daughters of the church, ye children of the faith. Why torment yourselves in regard to your future prospects? Why such agitation, such restlessness? End quote. So right. there was a quote in there from yeah, the our Bible. Savior. And then the Bible. Then it went back. So I, I hope I made that clear. But yeah, everybody, I mean, we I all know, know that. We all know that quote. And then said the word solicitous is right in the quote. It's in the Bible. Yeah. So what? So why do you concern yourself, basically? If we took the word solicitude out, or something. why are you solicitous? Why are you solicitous? Why yeah. are you concerning yourself? Yeah. Right. I mean, and the book is talking about marriage, right? So why are you concerning yourself with this? Yeah, like this is worldly solicitude in regard to marriage. To marriage. Right. Like so, um, God has a plan for you. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's going to go on further and tell us. That basically God has a plan, but that we shouldn't be concerning ourselves. Why aren't we current? What we should be concerning ourselves with is eyes on heaven. Yeah. You know, and doing the work mm -hmm. necessary. Yep. And then God puts all the pieces in Stay place. 
But like let let this is the thing, you know, that's a good thing, you know, let God be yeah. the puzzle man. Like let God put the pieces the pu- put, together he, for you. Just put your faith and your trust in him. Right. You it know? goes on here, read a little bit okay, more because so, it goes on to tell us a little bit more about this. Okay, quote Why adopt so many expedients to secure a fancied happiness? Has not your heavenly father provided for all this? Does he not understand what is most conducive to your happiness? Does he not allow you? Does he not even command you to bury all your cares in his paternal bosom? Away then with that unworthy diffidence in his goodness. Away with the thought that you can possibly be disappointed by leaving to him the selection of a partner. Who will be your joy, your happiness, your prop during life, and your associate in everlasting bliss. End quote. Right. So, um, basically, again, this is how God is concerned and does take it at very great importance. This chapter tells us kind of over and over again in who you are going to marry. Right. It's not left really to as much chance as you believe it is. Right. And he does have a plan. Mm-hmm. And as we said, you know, a couple chapters back, you're going to marry. Your soul is going to be attracted to your spiritual equal to your spiritual equal, to the likeness of your soul, right. right? So if your concerns are in the world, your your spouse is going to kind of reflect that, mm-hmm. right? If your concerns are for heaven, your spouse is going to reflect that, Yeah, right? I mean, people say, I'm. people say, oh, it's just, you know, oh, sometimes you get a good one, sometimes you get a bad one, you know, as in how <laughs> husbands, right? Like potato, potato. But they, so, oh, you got lucky, you got a good one. You oh sorry you're not so lucky yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know but it's not really the case yeah it's not left it's not left to as, chance as as it's it's not chance it's not coincidence chance. yeah right if you're following the world that's what you're going to marry and you're right. going to live to lament about that mm-hmm. something fierce right yeah uh, here read some more okay. Quote, his wisdom that cannot fail, his love that regards you with more than maternal tenderness, have already determined the worthy ob- object of your affections, and you have only to keep yourself within the line of duty to behold sooner or later the accomplishment of his designs and the realization of your most sanguine expectations, end quote. So what I pulled out of there was two little words, your line of duty. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, if you, if you want the most happiness that you could possibly have, and God knows what that is, then you have to pay attention duty. to your line of duty, yeah. right? Which, mm-hmm. you know, usually is your cross too. Mm-hmm. Another way of saying your line of duty is your cross. Yeah. You have to look after what needs to be looking, looked after, mm-hmm. you know? And like, I mean, a lot of people say, well, how do I know, you know? It's it's not it's really not as hard as people make it out to be. Like I don't know what needs to be done. Like I don't know what to do. Well, what needs to be done and do that. Well, and you know, I'm just gonna you say, know, and I think I'm. We might have already said this on this podcast before, so I might just touch briefly on it. But you know, my mom always taught us when we were kids that if we were doing our duty, if we were where we were supposed to be, yes, we get to stand back and we get to say. I was doing my duty. Like yeah. when, you know, that horrible old saying hits the fan, you know, I get to step back and say, I was doing my duty. Because if you're doing your duty and you're doing what's expected of you. Yes. To be where you're supposed to be. To be where be, you're supposed to be. When you're supposed to be there. Yeah. Doing what you're supposed to be doing when you're supposed to be doing it. Yeah. That's doing your duty. I mean, and, and that's especially, I feel like you really tried to drive that point home especially for my brother yes like for boys yeah you know because boys and this isn't like i'm not trying to be whatever but boys do have a tendency to get into trouble right you know yeah. like and i'm talking little boys you know they're always like doing things and rough housing and or, or, you know. or especially little little children do it all the time right like like you know well here they do it here, here. i'm gonna tell you don't go into that garage over there. there. <laughs> yeah. Know? Oh, where are the children? In the garage. In over the there. garage over there. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like I mean, and so you constantly have to. And we're just like we're just saying, don't go into the garage. Is a 
a sore subject here because there's a lot of tools and stuff in there that kids think they should play with. Yeah. That are very dangerous, you know. You know so it's, it's just, that's just an example. So, I mean, so when you're raising little children, you have to be firm with them uh, because you have to kind of instill this in them as they're young so that when they grow up, they that, have that the carries sense them through that care that sense of duty. Yes, uh, being where you're supposed to be, when you're supposed to be there, and doing what you have to do when you have to do it. And, and that that to me for ki- for kids that starts when they're kids. Yes, you can't start that when they're teenagers. I mean, you can you, start, have to, you can start it on yourself though. Right? Yes. No, I know, but I'm just I'm just saying that we always learned that from you you instilled that in us yeah when we were kids because i'm going to tell you there there if there's one thing that's an absolute besides my three favorite absolutes <laughs> is that stuff is always going to happen yes it's always going to happen and even jordan peterson said in his in his many years of being a psychologist not once has he seen anybody get away with anything yeah so stuff, I, I mean, and we know stuff happens. Why do we know stuff happens? Because divine providence demands it. Yeah. It demands it. Yeah. Right? That when you do this, you know, when you do A, B is going to happen. You know, and even like, you know, we, and I'll just use this as an example, and I, it's kids again, but they do make perfect examples of things. And we just had a hard moment with my son yeah. where the trouble happened. Yes. And something was wrecked. Yes. Here on the farm. And he was there. And he still, oh, I just, I was just standing there. I said, well, were you supposed to be there? Were you supposed to be standing there? Were you supposed to be standing there? Well, but I didn't do it. I was just standing there. Doesn't matter. Right. You, your duty, your job was not to be there. You were, you kids were not supposed to be there, you know? And so then... You are, quote unquote, an accomplice. Yes. You know, you you may not have ripped the thing off, but you were there. So you are in just as much trouble. Yes. And also, too. Did you come get an adult? Did you say, no, no, we shouldn't be here. Yeah. We shouldn't be touching this. No, you didn't. Yeah. And if you were doing what you were asked, if you were doing your duty, you would not have been in trouble. And, and also, too, like, I mean, these are valuable lessons for children because... If you're out with somebody and they murder somebody, yeah, the judge doesn't really care that you didn't care pull that the you trigger. Didn't pull the trigger, and you were just quote unquote there. there. You know, you're now you an, accomplice are an accomplice, and you're guilty. And I mean, and it doesn't even have to be that. Like, I mean, that's an extreme example. Yes. But these things carry through. You know, when they get teenagers, and you know, maybe kids are going to parties they shouldn't go to. Right. You know, I want my son to learn that now so that when he is a teenager, he's like, no, not my duty. Yeah, I shouldn't be I here. I can't be here. I can't be here. I can't be here. Like, this is when you instill You instill this, things. right? This this sense of duty, this sense of responsibility. I mean, and that's not to say that he might not, but I, I'm, I'm saying I'm trying. You right. Know? Well, no, you're saying you have to do, you, you, well, I mean, and if, okay, so, so even if, but if you don't have children. And you're just responsible for yourself, and you've never kind of reflected on this. This it's good. To if know. you make that your rule, yeah, of life, always be where you're supposed to be, and doing, doing what, what you're, you're supposed, supposed to be doing. doing. You will fall because when the stuff happens, when the dust blows up in yeah. everybody's faces, you get to stand back and throw the hands and go, "Hey, I was doing what I was supposed Those to be, be doing. doing." Yeah, and it's a darn good feeling. Yeah, <laughs> no. I was doing what I was supposed to be doing. You know, yeah, and and so so that one, you know, because even for myself personally, I can think of countless examples in my own life where I was like, "Man, why did that happen to me?" And then if I re- really reflect back, and I was like, "Because you were not supposed to be there." Yes, you shirked your duty. You flaked out on something. You were trying to cut corners. Yes, are you for are, myself personally? Yeah, when no, I no, think no. about things, no, I, I think, think, and every every instant I relate back to, you shouldn't have been there. Yeah, you should have. You know? Exactly. So, I mean, this all relates to the cross. It all relates to doing what's right. It all relates to the line of duty. And, I mean, that that is exactly what the book is telling us. If you keep yourself within your line of duty. Yes. You know. God, you know, you, Mr. You Wonderful will, will reap, be there. You will reap the accomplishments of his designs is what yes. it says. So, yeah. Very good point. 
All right, so we'll just continue on here. So, quote, Seek therefore first the kingdom of God and his justice, and all these things will be added unto you. Fly from the ways of sin. Be faithful in the observance of the divine law. Seek the things that are above, not those which are on the earth. Let not your heart be fascinated by the false glory of the world around you, and you will then be pre prepared to form a wise judgment on the subject of a matrimonial alliance. You will then view it in connection with your eternal interests. End quote. Right. So, I mean, so that little part gives us a little list of what to do, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, number one, to fly from sin. Yeah. To be faithful to divine law. To seek the things that are above. Um, and to avoid the false glory around you. Basically equals wise yeah. judgment. Yeah. Not right? So right. it's it's not, it really, people, it's not rocket science. No. Flee I mean, from sin. <laughs> It, it, it's it's sad faithful to divine law you know <laughs> you try not to be regretful but you know i read this book and i'm like man you just see like yes it is not that hard and i and i see my errors you but know, you i see, mean but why do people have errors because they 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 don't well they go they fall for the fall, false glory around yes them. well that was the biggest one that stand out for me not to fall for the false glory around you that is such a slippery slope yeah you know you know and you're looking at the amusements and the lights yeah. and the fancies of the world and then and they make you they they, they make you fall into sin like they make yeah. you just you know like the pied piper Hoo -hoo, come follow yeah. me <laughs> you know and you're like here i am yeah i love it all yeah Oh, gee, why did all this happen? Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, okay, so, quote, You will take counsel not from passion, not from the cheating appearances of the world, but from the suggestions of faith, from the inspirations of the Spirit of God, from the wisdom of those whose authority over you and real interest in your welfare must be your chief resource in consulting the will of heaven. And you will find in the joy and happiness of conjugal life, commenced under the us and continued with the blessing of religion a verification of those words of the apostle quote godliness is profitable to all things having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come end quote right so, so end of chapter two right end so i mean this is basically how you get the rewards yeah and again though i mean it's 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 um it's a lot easier to, ref well, it's, you see it more clearly when you've chosen wrongly. Yes. Yeah. Right. So when, when you're, when you're young and you're being led by the nose yeah. to the delights of the world and you're like, yeah, I'm in, yeah. you know, like count me in. Um, it, you're not, and, and it's, you can't even explain to somebody, like if somebody's being led away. Mm-hmm. You can't say, no, this is going to bring you disaster. They don't believe you. They don't, yeah. They don't believe you, right? So you have to have the heart, and the the heart is has to already be directed towards God. Yeah. So if you're, if you're raising your little children, you have to, as much as you can, like drive that home. Get that sledgehammer out and like, God, God, God. Mm -hmm. Like happiness, God. Happiness, God. Well, and I, you know, and I like, just wanted to say, I want to say something that I was listening to uh, the children i can't remember the exact title of it children behaving in church or something yeah um that the catholic Lisa family Dan. podcast posted yeah. recently yeah um i took something very interesting from that and i did just want to reiterate that here in this podcast uh but because you know driving the point home but you know she lisa made a very good point in there and pardon me lisa if i misquote you or mess it up but that you know to to drive the point home but in a loving yes very loving loving way because if you're if you're making everything about god and this and it's always with a negative connotation like you're in trouble and now we're going to go pray right right you yeah. know like that it, that is not going to do them any good whatsoever right right no and, right, absolutely. and kevin told a very lovely story about how his mother um I don't know if she did it on purpose, but she always put on this these singers, and I can't remember their name, before Mass. Yeah. And they always listened to these singers, and, and that was a fond memory for him. Yeah. When they're getting ready for Mass, listening to the singers. So finding the little joys and the way yes. to insert God in there. Yeah, no, absolutely. Like, I should, I should, I should kind of retract what well, yeah well that's why i said this because i want to say when i know the way my mom talks yeah she doesn't mean 
kids get down oh, we're praying you know? <laughs> yeah no no but she means it in a way that it's like these are the important things and you have to make them the important things right right and it's not like driving a sledgehammer <laughs> yeah well it's just like it has to I be it has to be you your it, focal point it, yeah it's that, that that you're like i have to instill love for god yeah to these little kids or yeah. if i don't if it's not about you know oh you know like and you have to do that lovingly yeah. you absolutely you have cannot, to do it lovingly. because i'm telling you i'm going through and i'm going to share this as my from my own personal trials so that you ladies can just maybe share the sorrow with me i'm having a really hard time right now with my son and the hail mary and i don't know what happened he all of a sudden cannot say the first part of the hail mary yeah and he's nine okay and i and i'm even embarrassed to say this um but well, it's I don't, a little mental block that's it, all yeah he's having a little and and he's he's saying something that you know my uncle's saying it weird and he's picking up on, and it's this whole big thing and i and i got really annoyed when yeah. we were saying the rosary because he's leading this deck and he won't say the hail mary and i'm like i got very annoyed and i got angry and that was wrong yeah that was so and if i could go back and if i could take that back yeah I would. I got so mad at him because I do get very like, this is our faith and you're, you know, like, we gotta be like, and then I'm like, no, and then, and then I'm like, no, you just so, you made that way worse. Yeah. You made that way worse. So if I could go back in time and I could correct, could cor- if I could correct that, the way I handled that situation and control my anger, yeah, yeah. I wish I could because now he like, he has this, and I'm so mad at myself because I did this. Yeah. When well, we go, par- when we parents kneel, do do the damage. We do, sorry. yeah. Well, and I know we do, and and so when we now when we kneel down to say the rosary at night, you can just see the. Oh my gosh, she's gonna have me lead a deck, and I can't do it. And 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 now, so I I just was like, no, Dougie. I said, you know, we're gonna take a little break. You don't have to lead. Just make sure you pray really well. And I got the book out, the family catechism book, which he loves from Father Radecki, the red yeah. one. He loves that book. He carries yeah. around with him everywhere. I said, just read along, you know, just read along and, and we'll get back to it. So I kind of backpedaled a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, And I'm glad I did, but I wish I wouldn't have done it in the first place. Yeah. You know what I you mean? You lost so, your cool. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, so I, I just wanted to share that with you ladies because that's a prime example. It does not work. No. It does know, not work. You have, you have to make them see the love. Yes. So anyways, yeah. But, um, and, and I, I'm not too downhearted. I know this is just a blip and we're having a, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. And, but that's you know, what you know how many times a... I forget the, our father. <laughs> I know. I sometimes, oh, it happened to me. It was, we, we were at the woman's, um, this is years ago and we'd say the rosary and I couldn't get through the apostles. Was it the apostles creed? I yeah, I think it was the Apostles' Creed, and I was like, I can't. All of a sudden, I can't, can't say, say it. it. Like, I, I need a book in front of me, or else I'm going to mess it up. Like, I don't know what goes it's on. Not, these I little know. blocks that happen, I but know. they do. So. They do, and they're normal. So if you have a little block, and you're like, how do I not know this? All of a sudden, yeah, yeah. You know, just just take a break I, and get a paper out and say, okay, I'll wait till this so block <laughs> passes. I know, but in that moment, I honestly like, and after I did too, I felt like the worst mother. I was like. What kind of mother are you? <laughs> but you know? I'm going to say, this is why, if we want our children to be saints. saints. I know we have to be a saint ourselves. We have to be our saint ourselves. It's, always, it's so it's, it's <laughs> I know. It's, but it is. It's most important it, that we work we on work, ourselves. Like most of the work you're doing should is on yourself. Yeah. You know. So. On yourself. So anyway, so that brings us to the end. Oh, no, no. Oh, we're not done. No, we're not done. I got one. Oh, I thought we were wrapping up. My mom's well, got something else she wants to say. I do because okay. um, this better be uh, important. Yeah, no, it's, I'm just kidding. No, there was a big phenomenon going on on TikTok. Oh, okay. I'm not on. TikTok, I, well, I'm not so. on TikTok either. But you know, oh. I watch the people that tell me what's going on on oh, TikTok. Right. Okay. So anyway, there's has any, who's heard of the trad wife? Not me. Well, she's only because you talked about her. Well, it, it's a big thing to go on and and uh, TikTok or you know even pinterest or whatever you know and they're women who are pushing for traditionalism traditional role models right Right. so they um they're all about and of course it's 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 actually having a huge following like women are you know 
you know, how they were burning their bras in the 60s. Well, they're turning around. Bad. Well, that's was the big saying, right? The feminism, <laughs> right. right? Well, now it's oh, turning so around. Turn it back. So they want to be trad wives. They want to be traditional wives. They want to stay home and look pretty for their husband. And he goes and they make the cookies yeah. and they, you know, walk around like, I don't know, a Stepford wife or something. I don't know exactly what. And of course, the feminists, they're. They're totally against it. Oh, sure. and they're, you know these trad wives are getting lots of follows and the feminists are ripping them apart. But I'm, I just want to comment about it because they're not exactly right. Who? The trad wives. They're not correct. They're not correct. Right. It's still, and, and I'm not taking anything away from them. Yeah. I'm not taking anything from away from them because at least they're trying. Right. That's what I say. At least they're trying. So what are they not correct about? Well, if you remember, here, I just can you read that? Can you read my handwriting? Because this yeah. was at the very beginning of, oh, our, of our book. book. Okay, so right. this is a quote from our mission and duties. Is young the, from, woman, from chapter from one. Chapter one. Quote: Some are willing, indeed, to regard her as called by providence to be the charm and ornament of their life. But this point of view, though apparently more elevated, is not much more honorable to woman, and overlooks equally her nature and dignity. End quote. Right. So they're talking about men. So they're talking. Right. I, I didn't. They're talking about a woman being the charm Arm and the, the ornament, ornament of a man. A man. Yeah. Right. And basically that's what these trad wives are. Are kind of. They're trying to be the ornament. Yes. The you know, the little trophy, the trophy wife, you right. know, like here. I mean, like they're doing better than the feminists. I'm going to say that. But like for us, for us Catholic women, we know our mission is a lot bigger, bigger than and that. deeper like that that has the depth of a kiddie pool. Right. You know, our mission is to save souls, to sanctify our families, to, you know, to do the hard stuff, to pick up a cross. Yeah. You know, like and I was always, I don't know why, but I always found the trad wife of the 50s. Like that's what they're kind of going back, back to. to the right, 50s, the leave yeah. it to beaver. Yeah. You know, um kind of look, right? And and they're making and, and women are doing it too. Yeah. They're love. They're they're like no. We're done with this. Yeah. Because they're looking for purpose. They're looking for stuff. I do have to say though, I I everything you're saying. You know, when I go out to the grocery store, I would rather see that. No, I'd rather see it too. Than the blue hair and the, yes. No, I mean okay. I, the yoga okay, pants. I, <laughs> let's not get wrong. Let's not take this too out of. Yeah. I would much. I would much rather prefer I, that women me, would try to bring back their traditional roles. But what my point it sounds is, like the motive is skewed. Money. Is that, I, I hope they all do it. Let's just say, yeah. I hope every woman in the world wants to bring the back the traditional tradition. rules. Well, because yeah, we need a little more of that, a little less yoga pants. But what I'm saying for us, for us Catholic women, it has to be deeper than that. It has to be deeper than that, yeah. and it is deeper than that. And God expects more. Yeah. Right. It's not just about you know you prancing around with little fluffy slippers on, baking cookies, and bending. You know, like you, you yeah. know, bending over. Yeah, hi, gear. Kissy, yeah. kissy. You yeah. know, like I got my red lipstick on and away yeah. I go and I'm wearing my vintage dress. Yeah. You know, this. Well, and I mean, but that to me is like, this is where I really struggle with the world uh -huh. and and the whole doing things for social media. I'm just going to say. Yeah. Because it seems more like a character. Yes. Doesn't it? Yes. Like, I, I'm, not, I'm not questioning any of these women's motives. Yeah, I I'm hope not, you all become traditional I'm wives. Not saying, Don't get me wrong. I hope you hard, all do. It's just hard for me to fathom that this is not just a character thing. Yes. Like it's I mean, a role and playing. This is why I, a role playing. And this is why I just, I don't really put stock into what I see on the internet because I don't know what to believe. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I Well, don't... I mean, I think th that this whole idea of what a trad wife is, is actually what ushered in. Like that was on, that was, that was what ushered in, you know, Vatican II. Right? right, that type of lifestyle, the fifties, and and as Catholics, we have a tendency because they were trying to fight that. No, they weren't fighting anything. They just were living this "leave it to Beaver," you know, and no, but what you say? Oh, the, so it that they, ushered in Vatican II. They weren't. They had the depth of a kiddie pool. Right, that so it was easy to come in. And it say, was easy to come in, and like, okay, you've got nothing. Like, it was easy to look at that woman, to look at June Cleaver. Yeah. Who's, you know, the mother on Leave It to Beaver, in case yeah. you don't know. And say, she has nothing. Right. 
she has she has no identity she has she's doing nothing of value she's just there to be the arm candy and mm-hmm. you know well you know whatever his name was mr cleaver cleaver was out doing the stuff and mm-hmm. the boys and she's just patting boys on the head and making them peanut butter sandwiches and yeah. and and her life has no purpose right it didn't have a purpose right it's no wonder they were looking for purpose right it ushered it in, right? Right. I mean, right. and as always, when something ushers something else in, there was it does so because there was a problem with that, right? You know, women look after their husbands, or they change the diapers, or they make the peanut butter cookies, or or they're doing the wash because they're uniting. Like there's purpose and right. aim in that, and it's not it's not it it's not just arm candy, right? trophy wife you know you're doing real sacrifices and real work for the salvation of souls yes yeah yeah and that's that's the thing although uh, like i said i much prefer the trad wife over the over the the feminist (laughs) but i am also saying that 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 the duties that you know the role of the woman is so much more deeper and complex than than that. that yeah Right, and it's no wonder that women broke away to try and find where's my substance, where's right. my meaning, where's my whatever. Right, right. right. Okay, so. well that just takes us over an hour, so I guess we'll wrap it up there, and um, we'll be back next week. Did we just dis- decide whether we were going to skip over chapter nine or not? Well, I haven't read it yet. Well, it's private interviews before marriage. Well, I'll read it. <laughs> well, my mom will read it. We might be back with chapter nine. We might not. We'll see if there's anything in there that we need. Oh, to there just... is always something. Okay, well, we might be back with chapter We probably nine. will be back with, because we want to know. We said we that. We want to right? know. I know, I know. Okay, all right. So, um, yeah. So, until then, we will be back next week. So, um, I hope that everybody has a very blessed week. May God bless you and Our Lady guide you. And as always, St. Teresa, Teresa, pray, pray for, for us. us.